Hello, hello, hello. Hey, y'all. Howdy, howdy, howdy. I hope everyone's doing well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Did y'all miss me? Miss me, miss me. Now you gotta kiss me. Hey, y'all. What's tea? Hey, CR Holmes. Hey, Just a Girl Tracy. Hi, Diane Radford. Gigi. Hey, boo. What's really going on, ladies? Happy Tuesday tea. Hey, stay fit with Shan. Hey, Shay, girl, good to see you. Happy, 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 happy for you. Girl, let me know if you want to come on to this live, girl. Let me know if you want to come on. Someone said, uh, you know the debate is on, Pooh. Girl, I don't care about those white men. Unless, unless I'm married to them, I don't care about them. And I will marry a white man. Done it before. Doing it now. Do it again if I must. No shade. No shade. Yes. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. <gasps> the more woman said, hey, saw you last weekend at the Real Tacos in Atlanta. Yeah, girl, I was in Atlanta seeing, my, seeing all my clients there. And taking a, taking a, oh, someone said the debate is done. Good. Because guess what, girl? The only debate that I give a, I give a shit about is whether you're going to be with a white man, a Hispanic man, or a black man, or an Asian man. That's the debate, girl. That's the debate. What kind of man you're going to be with? Yeah, someone said, you take clients in Atlanta. I take clients, I have clients all around the world. Someone said a Mexican man. Okay, in the chat, y'all, let me know what the debate is. Are you getting with a Hispanic man, a black man, a white man, or an Asian man? In the chat, let me know. Let me know who 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 the debate is. And then I will tell you who won. <laughs> someone said black. Oh, girl. Oh, someone said Asian or redhead. Okay, redhead is its own category too, no shade. No shade. Polynesian, girl, you lost already. Dominican is black, girl. So that's black. Okay. Okay, honey, it's all over the place, girl. I'm so surprised, girl. This is a mixed crowd, girl. This looks like the Democratic National Convention up in here. We got some whites, we got some Asians, we got some blacks, Hispanics. Someone said Ghanaian man, question mark. That question mark is correct. No shade, shade. Okay, good. Someone said Arabic. I know that's right and wrong. E.L. Calloway said, you're so pretty, Anmar. I am not a category, just FYI. All right, all right, y'all. Okay, someone said a good man. Womp, womp. Girl, that's boring. <laughs> no boring answers, please. If you don't know, this is not the live for you to keep it cute and for you. Okay, in this live, we're Dolores Van Cartier. We are not Sister Mary Clarence. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Someone said black and generous. Good luck. Okay. Someone said, what's the question? Y'all, if y'all come late to class, girl, you're not going to get it all. All right. For those of you that do not know me, I haven't even introduced myself. And some of these girls don't even know who I am. My name is Anwar White. I am a dating coach for black and brown women, and I am here to help y'all with your love lives, honey. I want to help you level up, right? And um, so what we do in these sessions is um, I want you to put your questions in the chat, questions about love, dating, relationships, men or women. Bitch, I don't care. No shade honey. I was just on TikTok and they were talking about Therians, girl. It's for people who identify as animals. I said, what in the world? 
Girl, what in the world? What the world? WTW. Ethereum. T-H-E-R-I-A-N. So, I know, girl. I know. I know. Anyway, we're all inclusive here. Even if you are Ethereum, girl, no shade. Okay? So, put your questions in the chat and I am going, <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> someone said I dated someone who identified as a wolf. Girl, you were living in twilight, girl. Twilight. Yeah. Okay. Put your questions. Yeah. Someone said no more pronouns, honey, please. <laughs> oh Lord. Okay. Put your questions in the chat and I'm going to answer them when you have them. Okay, someone said, how to respond to you got IG? First of all, don't respond to any questions that are not grammatically correct. That's number one. Okay. Um, number two, <laughs> honey, I'm not going, I'm not going to engage with a man that has a 1.7 GPA. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And I suggest that you not do it as well. Okay? If he's in summer school, I'm not talking to him. That should be on everyone's list. Um, so you got IG. We don't engage with those men. Um, do you have in IG? We engage with those men. And your answer is, I do, but I don't give it to men that I don't know. I'm going to have to get to know you a little bit more. Okay? And ladies, I'm drinking my kombucha now. So I'm, I'm a healthy vegan white woman. Okay. Let me see. What <laughs> so nobody can talk to me because I'm vegan and I'm a white woman now. And you don't want that. All right. Well, y'all, girl, these questions are going fast. So no shade. I might miss some questions, but I love the fact that y'all are here. Okay. Jay said, are you in a relationship? Girl, I'm married. I'm married with children. Just like Al Bundy, honey. Married with children. Um, and if you are listening to people on this app that are single, chronically single, not married, have not gone from A to Z themselves, I want you to consider the source. No shape, but if they can't make it happen for themselves, what makes you think that they're going to make it happen for you? Yeah? But yes, I'm married with children. I know y'all don't think it because my body is so snatched. <laughs> But um, it is. Someone said thoughts on the league. Girl, don't, if you're black, don't go on the league. If you go on the league and you're black, they're going to treat you like you're in the Negro League. They're not even going to look at you. No shade. Don't do it. Should a woman ever approach a guy? I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask, I'm not going to like say your name. I'm just going to look at the questions because I'm just going to look at them when I see them. Should a woman ever approach a guy? Yes, for help. If you ever need help, approach a guy and ask him for help. But that's the only time that I would say approach a guy. Now, should you position yourself next to a guy? 100%. Start a conversation when you're positioned next to him. Don't walk up to him like you're some sort of pimp trying to make him part of your roster or stag. No. Position next to him at the bar. Ask him what he's drinking. Ask him what he thinks you should drink. Okay? <laughs> Someone said, I'm a plus size and want to date a white man. Good. Get a gamer. Get a white gamer, girl. I don't know where you are, but if you're a Boston girl, go to MIT. <laughs> um, get yourself a gamer or get yourself um, a bodybuilder. Now, those bodybuilders, they might have a really small D, but... Girl, it's, it's going to look like this because all the roids. Oop. 
See? It's so small, I can't even hold it, girl. See this little... That's what, that's what the bodybuilders are given. Because all the roids. Um, so, that's, that's the trade-off, girl. But, honey, no shade. The bodybuilders love everything big. So the bigger you are, the better. Okay? Okay, someone said, any terms should I take a man who ghosted me because uh, he was busy with work, area construction manager? Anytime a guy says that he's busy, it means that he doesn't like you. And I'm sorry to be like very blunt about it, but I want everyone to understand this. Girl, um, Barack Obama was not busy enough to have dinner with his family most nights. And he was the leader of the free world. There's no such thing as busy. Busy means don't like. Okay? I know, I know women that are literally with doctors and like clients and they text their guy, girl, their guy, you know what they, you know what those doctors do? They're doing their thing and they have an assistant saying, hey, can you text my girlfriend back? Let her know I'm in surgery and that I'll, I'll talk to her in 45 minutes. Suture. Right? So don't ever, if he says busy, that's, that's the B word, girl. He's basically could just called you a bitch. Okay? That's what, that's how I want you to think about it. <laughs> oh my god someone said as a surgeon pa i confirm this is true i think y'all think i'm like lying to y'all mm -mm, never that honey i know a little bit about my doctor stuff i watch gray's anatomy i know ct scan mri l-o-v-e Someone said, what's that skincare routine? No shade, ladies. Good sex. Clock it. Who's having it? Who's not? Put it in the chat. I'm nosy. I want to know what the tea is. Oh, and by the way, if I say anything that resonates with you, tap the screen, double tap, triple tap. I want likes up in here. If you want to work with me, you can go to the link in my bio. You can check that out. We're going to just kiki a little bit. I'm going to answer your questions, but we're also going to have a little, little bit of fun too. I just came from my group session where I taught my clients exactly how I want them to date for every day. Date one, date two, date three, date four, date five, date six, date seven, date eight, date nine, all the way to exclusivity. So I'm up. I'm ready to kiki. I'm ready to rock and roll. Um, I had a client that just got into an, got engaged last night. Honey, we've, had, we've already had two women get into relationships this week. I want to let you all know, every week there's at least three women that are getting into relationships in my program. The work works. If you want to do this deeper work, definitely book a call with me. I don't think we have a lot of sessions left for the week, to be honest with you. We've been booked for the last couple of weeks. Also, if you know of any coaches that are amazing, I mean tip top, please give me their information because... We're getting to the point where we have so many clients, we need another coach. My coach, my head coach, Coach Shoya, myself, we're holding it down, but I already know that the business is growing so much. And to be honest with you, I don't want to raise my prices anymore. I feel like we're at a good level. It's probably really, really expensive for a lot of people, and I don't want to go beyond that. So if you know any amazing coaches, not bullshit coaches on here that just talk shit for likes, people who like know their shit, let me know. Key said, how soon should you start dating after a breakup? So it's not about length of time. It's about depth of healing. So what that means is um, if you can talk about your last relationship without any emotion, you're probably ready to date. Because here's the thing. People are always asking me, when am I ready to date? I think sometimes people feel like, oh my God, I have to be perfect. I have to be 100% healed. You just have to be 50% healed. Another quarter of healing will happen during dating. Another quarter of healing will happen when you're in a relationship. 
So all of the ladies that are thinking that they have to be totally perfect and totally healed before they start dating, you're wrongo dongo, as my mother would say. Oh, by the way, I just had an article come out from BuzzFeed. So definitely check that out if you want to. I think it's in it's in my stories on IG if you want to check it out. It's a me answering all of the more viral dating questions out there. So definitely check it out. Okay. Okay, let me see what y'all are talking about. Oh my God, someone said almost a year for me, so not, nah, we'll grow celibate here. Someone said drought season. All about Nay said, how many dates before I sleep with him? Well, girl, it already sounds like you really want to in your head, girl. So anything I say is going to be not what you want. Sounds like you wanted to sleep with him um, at negative one date. Um, my recommendation as a dating coach is that, um, that we're intimate after exclusivity. We want to see true commitment. The other thing is, like, girl, you can throw your pee around anytime you want to, no shade. The, the danger in that is that you will get chemically bonded to a man and you'll be digmatized. And you'll have the twitches, the shakes, because it'll mess with your critical reasoning skills. So you can do all of that if you want to but it will affect you and how you think about this guy. And it'll create a roller coaster inside of your body. Girl, you'll be a part of Inside Out Part 3, the movie. And they'll add a new character called D. <laughs> don't be that girl. Please, don't. You hear me? It's true tea, honey. It's true tea. Okay. Um, and we all know that girl. Best friend, cousin, sister, auntie. She's with the guy that is not good for her at all, but she is so digmatized that she's not even thinking straight. Don't be that girl. Part of it is waiting. It's also a great evaluation tool to see if he's actually wanting a relationship or if he just wants to hit. Okay. Homie said, black women living and working in a small white town help. Well, girl, um, I always say if you're, if you're in a small town, you want to post your dating apps in the closest biggest city. Okay. Um, and go from there. And thank you all so much for the 42,000 likes here on uh, TikTok. I appreciate it. Mm, let me see what y'all are talking about here. Mm, what's your take on sneaky links? Well, I need... If you must not know me. I'm a dating and relationship coach. So I help women date and I help women get into relationships, get engaged, get married. That is not in my wheelhouse. I don't even know what that is. Like, as a gay man, I would never want to sneak around. The fact that sneak is in the, in the nomenclature of that lets me know that you're doing things in the dark. You're being hidden. And I want to be 100% honest and keep it real. I think that's why y'all come. If you're curvier, if you're a darker skin, don't let these guys sneaky link you. Don't do it. Because some of them will try. Okay. A 
Okay, let's see what's going on. Um, is it crazy that my friends say that I love toxic relationships? No, your friends know you better than you probably know yourself, so it's probably true. You're gonna need to figure out why you like the toxicity of the relationship, right? And oftentimes it is because we will lean into relationships that are familiar and our parents create our bonding patterns. So it probably means that you had a toxic relationship with one of your parents or both of them. Now I will tell you, for most of my black women clients, most of them have highly judgmental or critical mothers and physically or emotionally absent fathers, both very toxic. So explore that, okay? Um, Casa Amigo said, I love you, Anwar. Thank you, girl. Journey said, Journey 9 said, you up late, friend. Girl, I just got out of my session with my clients, girl. But I said, I needed to, I needed to, honey, I needed to talk to my girls. See what, what's really going on. And honey, I asked a question about when's the last time you got it got the girls are saying 10 years, year and a half. Honey, y'all going to need to touch yourselves. Before you get touched by an angel. Okay. Darling said, what happens if he doesn't show you off to his family or friends? His family and friends should already know your name and should already know everything about you. Or a lot about you. If they don't, you're not the one. And I don't mean to be rude, but I'm letting you know what it looks like, what I see every week with my clients. If he introduces you and they don't already say, oh, so this is Darlin. Out. Okay. Nia said, do you recommend rotational dating? I sure do. I sure do. I call it Olympic dating. You want to have a gold medalist, a silver medalist, and a bronze medalist at all times. And if you don't, you not. Don't stop dating until you get them. Don't stop till you get enough dating Olympians. Like my mentor Michael said. Okay. Ladies, you're going to have to rotationally date. Okay? Some of the girls are like, I can't even get one. I think it's because y'all are going for the gold all the time. I think that you have to think about it like you're applying to college. You have some reach schools. Let's be honest. Some of the guys we're talking to might be a little bit of a reach, no shade. Some target schools guys that are kind of on your level and then some safety schools those guys that you might not be feeling totally but showing up and doing everything that they need for you this is how you fill up this roster girl y'all are trying to apply to harvard princeton stanford penn yale and then getting mad because you're not getting into any of these schools and if you do get into a school, you're not getting any scholarships, so you can't go. This is how you date. This is how I want you to date. Okay? So where are we finding these men? We're finding them online. We're finding them offline. Someone said, I can't handle a roster. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can handle it. You, the reason why a lot of women think that they can't handle a roster or Olympic dating is because you're used to giving 100% to these guys. So when you have three guys, you think that you're going to have to give 100% of yourself to them. What I'm offering to you is that you need to give each one of these guys 
33%. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Because um, one of them will drop every week. It's like, um, I don't know, American Idol Girl. Every guy gets 33%. The other thing is, when a guy texts you, you don't need to answer him right away. When you're texting, you need to have specific times where you're texting your dudes. I was just telling this to my clients and I'll tell it to you too, even though you haven't paid me. <laughs> um, have time, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Treat these men like meals and just eat them up. Breakfast, you chat with all your dudes. Lunch, you chat with all your dudes. Dinner, you chat with all your dudes. That's it. That's it. What's freaking you out and tripping you out is every time a guy texts you, you feel like, oh, I got to text him back. Don't be that girl. Yes, honey, devour these men. The reason why you do that is because you have a bonding pattern. And let me know if this is true for many of you. You were taught, probably from your mother, maybe from your dad, that if someone texts me or calls me, I have to, I have to respond immediately. And if you don't believe me, miss a call from your mother. She'll probably call you right back two or three times. So you're taught that I have to drop everything for someone that I like and love. Yeah? Also, um, wait, someone said you're right, sir. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. And he said the Caribbean mom scroll. If you are from Caribbean, Nigerian, Ghanaian, I pray for you every night. Every night. Now, I vogue when I cross, but I'm still praying. <laughs> I vogue it down, but I still pray for you. Okay? <laughs> we have to unlearn it, ladies. We have to unlearn it. Yeah? Someone asked me how many of my clients go to therapy. Probably like a third of them. By the way, ladies, go to therapy. When I tell you a lot of your friends, sisters, cousins, they're going, they're just not telling you about it. It is an interesting secret in our community that a lot of people, many more people are going to therapy than you think. Even if they're doing betterhelp.com, girl, the girls are doing it. Someone said, pray for the girls in Atlanta. I'm not praying for y'all. Honey, I was in Atlanta two weekends ago you know I was with all of my clients and why did all of the men that come over here get my number? My number. Honey, they are gay. Atlanta boys are gay, girl. They're gay. The girls, so if you ever felt like, oh, I don't want to be that girl that's in therapy. Girl, call him a coach. Call him a life coach. Call him your analyst. Call him your, you know, leadership development program. Whatever you got to do, go. Yeah. It's crazy. When I tell you, when I was in Atlanta, I was feeling uncomfortable. Me, gay old me girl, uncomfortable. Why? Because everywhere I went, I felt like I could literally get with three-fourths of the men there. 
It's all in the eyes, girl. All of their feet were pointing toward me. Girl, they were, girl, but the, the men in Atlanta, they don't care. Honey, they were looking me up and down. Sweetie, I'm a suburban mother of three. I'm not doing this. Mm -mm. So, so I will, I will say this, and I think it's really important, especially for the girls in Atlanta. You will need to have one app in your home base and the other app somewhere else, North Carolina or um, Birmingham or um, Chattanooga, Charleston to meet somebody else outside of Atlanta. Okay, so I was talking about um, meeting people online. So one of the things that I do in my program is um, I help each lady understand like what their natural flirt style is. Because a lot of you girls, no shade, I think a lot of women are taught that the way that you flirt is by being this va-va-voom, siren, vixen, and many of us are not that girl. So you've got to figure out what your flirt style is. Someone said, I don't know how to flirt. Many of us, and I was telling this to my clients a few weeks ago when we were going through this flirt style quiz. Many of us don't know how to flirt because we don't feel safe inside or safe enough to flirt. Everyone has their own flirt style whether it's being playful, whether you're more traditional, whether you're more intellectual, whether you're more physical, you've got to figure out which one yours is and lean into that. Most of y'all are not va-va-voom. So don't try to give va-va-voom. Especially for the smart girls out there. Flirt with this. Everybody can flirt with these. My little A cups, girl. I can flirt with them. And I give a V neck, girl. I'm already flirting with my A cups. You got to know how to flirt with what you got and what your lane is. Okay. Sierra Leone said, What do you mean when you say ba ba boom? Girl, I can't explain ba ba boom if you don't know what ba ba boom is. If you don't know, you're never going to know. Someone said, what if you are Baba Boom? Then, girl, that's your lane, girl. Baba Boom. Fast lane. You going fast, girl. Yeah, honey, somebody said Google it. Someone said, I'm Baba Boom until I let out this Urkel laugh. Girl, that's not Baba Boom. Okay, so um, I think it's really, so I was talking about safety because I think this is like a very important point that you, and this is what I help my clients do. We have to have the emotional confidence and the internal safety that comes with boundaries to be able to be vulnerable and flirt. Flirting is vulnerability. And if you don't know how to be vulnerable, it's going to be hard for you to connect with these men. Okay? Okay. Someone said, I'm a bully as a flirt. So if you are a bully when you're flirting, it is because you have experienced a lot of the patriarchy. Meaning, like when you grew up in your household, it meant that your dad was authoritarian and it means that he was number one and everybody else was a second class citizen. Or that your brother had more privileges than you did growing up. And so your first inclination is that you want to take them down a few notches. So you want to bully them and take them down so that you feel like you're on even, even, uh, playing field. 
total defense mechanism. We don't have to fight with these men, honey. A lot of us are playing defense in dating. Girl, defense doesn't win games. I don't care what the high school football coach said. In dating, you have to play offense. If you're going to play defense, you're always going to be defensive and ready for the fight. You got to score, girl. You got to play offense. This is what I help my clients do. I help them flirt. I help them learn how to connect with men and connect with themselves first and foremost. So if that's something that's of interest, you definitely want to book a call with me. Because, girl... Defense is boring. Adele said, I love listening to you even though I've been married for 30 years. Thank you, girl. I appreciate that. How to manage perfectionism. Oh, girl. Oh, perfectionism is also boring. Now, I will say this, because I always want to give you the why, not just the what. Some of these other girls just give you the what. Um, a lot of us were brought up to be perfectionists because um, a lot of our parents knew that we needed to be perfect if we were going to succeed in this world. Especially our black moms. So that is what we were raised to be. The unfortunate part about what that means in dating is that when you're quote unquote perfect, you will only be admired. No one can relate to perfection. You can't love something that you admire. To have true connection is to be relatable. The other thing about perfection is that it's rooted in shame and it's rooted in criticism. And if you're a perfectionist, I'm pretty sure that you have a lot of shame and that you're really critical. And love equals acceptance. So if you're judging everything and everyone you're not going to get with anybody. Men are very sensitive. They're sensitive to judgment and criticism. And so even if you're talking to him and you're judging and criticizing some other thing, he's going to feel less likely to even want to share anything with you because he's going to be afraid that you're going to judge it as well. So part of this work is healing no shade, ladies, your mother wound to be able to move through that so that you can come from a very accepting place. When I tell you, you want to be relatable. You don't want to be perfect in dating. Alexia said, your words help me so much. Thank you. You're so welcome. Okay. <laughs> Nav said, we need you on Oprah. <laughs> um, we're working on a little something something in the works. We got something going on. Not with Oprah trying to get, get a, something television related started up. Yeah. Mo Ashley said, but they expect perfection from us. But here's what I want to offer all of you. And this is what I do on my program. So if you want to do this work, you definitely want to book a call with me. Um, many of you are still focused on being a daughter, and not a woman. Let me repeat myself. 
where a lot of us are raised to be great daughters, but not great women. So what that means is a daughter, what does she do? She listens, she obeys, she does what she's told. She doesn't cause any trouble. So oftentimes we will do that because that is what gave us the attention and the validation that we need. She gets good grades as an adult. She has a good job. Stop being a good daughter. That's not going to help you. In life, but especially in dating. We need to learn how to be a good woman. And I know it's so freaking ironic since I'm a gay man telling you this, but I'm sharing this with you based on the 15 years of dating coaching that I've been doing. The quicker that you can get out of her shadow and be desperate for her love, the quicker that you can find true love in dating. Because the things that you will need to do, a good daughter can't do. The good daughter doesn't stress her mom out. A good girlfriend stresses her man out. That bonds him to her. A good daughter obeys, doesn't talk back. A good girlfriend does what she wants and speaks up. First, maybe I'll do a video about this. It sounds like this is really hitting a lot of y'all. I'm hoping that this is a good thing. Um, but this is the sort of work that we do in my program. We go much deeper. Yeah, girl, you know me. I can talk about D's all day, every day. But if we really want to do the work, this is what it sounds like. So whatever your daughter ways are, you need to drop them and drop them immediately. Someone said, yeah, so <laughs> them comments slowed down, honey. Honey, when I started talking about that mama wound, honey, Hey, the girls were gagged. They weren't anymore, girl. I caught that tea. Um, I'll make a video about this because I do think this is important. Okay. Someone said, Pastor Anwar. Well, I am gay. I know a lot of pastors are. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go hell, girl. I'm gonna go to hell, girl. Girl, straight down, girl. Gay down, girl. <laughs> Giving altar, girl. Okay, mm. someone said, Anwar, do you have a Muslim background? Um, respectfully speaking, I have had Muslims in my back, down, 
<laughs> um, no, my 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 name is is has a, a Muslim background. <laughs> uh. Okay, let me see what's going on. Someone said, I'll, see, I'll save you a seat at the bar. Thanks, girl. Jill said, just stop and by to say I love your content. You never miss. Thank you, girl. I appreciate that. Okay. Okay, let me see what the, where the questions are, honey. <laughs> Um, okay, thank you for all you do. You're so welcome. Um, so just FYI, these recordings are always put in on my YouTube channel the next morning from my assistants. Someone said TMI, too much information. Honey, you must be new here. Honey, we go through it all. We talk about it all, honey. We don't play that mess. So if it's too TMI, girl, you, you gotta go. Okay, let me see what the questions are. Yeah, honey, it's never TMI. They're on the wrong live, girl. Jasmine said, neurodivergent dating, what do you recommend? Okay, so I wanna say something. I'm not a doctor. I just play one on Grey's Anatomy. A lot of black women are not diagnosed with their neurodivergency. And what happens is it definitely affects the way that you date. So what I know about this, and I'm not an expert, but I'm just sharing with you my experience is hypersensitivity to rejection. Also, you're, the way that you talk, you're gonna go from topic to topic and it's gonna seem like you don't give a shit about what the guy is saying because you're going from, someone's saying, what is that? Like if you have ADHD or ADD, right? So you're gonna like change topics a lot or you're gonna miss social cues and it affects the way that you connect with other people, right? So one of the things, if you know this about yourself, you want to tell them pretty early, like, oh, okay. And obviously this manifests and it looks different on different people, on different bodies, different minds. If, but if you know, for example, that you are someone who goes from one topic to another in half a second, you need to let them know you know, pretty early on before first date or even on like a phone or physical a phone date. Hey, I just want to let you know, like my mind just works a little bit differently. So sometimes I will skip to different subjects. If I go a little bit too fast, just bring me back to the original subject. Okay. You want to do that. Okay, someone keep on saying, I finally caught the live. I want to let you know I've been so busy, y'all. I'm writing this book. I'm figuring out this potential TV show. The business is going crazy, so I haven't been able to get on live as much as I like to. I'm trying to go one or two times every week, but it's looking more like once a week. But I'm trying for two times a week, okay, ladies? Okay. Someone said, we forgive you, girl. <laughs> okay, let me see what are the questions. I miss your Sunday morning lives. I know, girl, but this is what I'm trying to, you know, kick it with the kids. So I'm not doing those as much anymore. I might, I might surprise you. So now I do them on Tuesdays. And if I don't do my lives on Friday nights, I try to hit them either on a Saturday night or a Sunday morning. 
she said, and why I feel like uh, staying in Arizona is a lost cause. Phoenix is probably top five. Top five worst places to date. Now, someone just sent me a video talking about which states have the biggest D. Louisiana, Alabama, and y'all know why. But you know what surprised me a lot? Girl, Utah. Girl, that Mormon D coming through. That's how they have all those kids, girl, no shade. Alaska, girl. Maine, Vermont. Girl, it's that, girl, it's that, that nature, girl. Girl. Somebody said that country grammar, corn fed for the down south. But girl, Alaska, Vermont, and Maine, honey, they stacking up. Someone said, get me a ticket. Not to Alaska, honey. What do they say about the bears, girl? Whatever they say about the bears, that's what I say about men, girl. I think they said, if it's a black bear, girl, play dead. That's what I do with the black men, honey. Honey, they said, if it's a brown bear, I don't know what they say, girl. I think they play dead, girl, because I play, I play dead with the brown men too, honey. <laughs> if it's white, fight, girl. That's what I do, girl. Honey, I fight with these white men, honey. Honey, I'm playing dead with all the... If, if they got color on their skin, girl, I'm playing dead, girl. I'm just going to let them take me. So what? Someone said, you're married to a white man. I don't care. <laughs> oh, my God. I hope he doesn't hear me, girl. I hope he doesn't hear me, girl. Oh, Lord. Someone said, fighting with the polar bear is the last thing you want to do. Well, thank you so much, Miss National Geographic 2024. Okay, y'all said you won't tell. Good. Someone said, he'll forgive you. He sure will, girl. I'm not leaving him and he not leaving me. Oh, someone said, if it's brown on the ground. Girl, same thing. Dead. Dead. Dead for the brown. Dead for the black. <laughs> okay. Okay, what are the questions? Nicole said, mother and where is mothering? <laughs> okay, someone asked chemistry or compatibility. I would say always prioritize compatibility over chemistry. And the reason why I say this is because a lot of guys that have chemistry um, are toxic and narcissistic and they have chemistry with everyone because that's their jam, right? And so the other thing is that if you want to create a foundation of a relationship based on chemistry, the thing that we have to understand is that chemistry literally fades within our bodies within 18 months, so that's why after about a year and a half, you see all of these relationships not working out because they were built on chemistry and not compatibility. Okay. Someone keeps on asking about the app Black Gentry. And I will tell you this. Um, they came in my DM or they commented, like, I want to say almost a year ago. And they tried to come for me because I didn't shout them out in a video that I did about an app. And they said that I was being shady to black apps. And I wasn't being shady to black apps. I just didn't think that their app was good enough. Go run tell that. So Black Gentry, no ma'am. Okay, let me see what the other questions are. <laughs> Not the collective, ooh. Yeah, honey, don't get it twisted. Just because I'm a nice person, well, 
I will tell you this. I'm a kind person. I'm not a nice person. There's a difference. Someone said, this has been my favorite live. <laughs> yeah, who gonna check me, boo? Um, okay. So, um... Let me see. Oh my God, this is going by so fast. What do you offer on the calls? Well, generally what I will do if you do book a consultation call is um, we'll talk about what's working in your love life, what's not. I will also share with you my perspective on like what I think your dating opportunities are, okay? I think it is important to understand like where you are and where you want to be. So we'll figure out how to get there and what work you need to do to make sure that you're there. And just FYI, thank you so much for the 125,000 likes here on TikTok. Um, I so appreciate it. Um, the simple kid just like gives the tea on Nigerian men, very educated, well off, what else? Very controlling, very blunt, very love bomber, um, may cheat often, um, oftentimes have families in Nigeria that you don't even know about. Like you'll have to do detective work with Nigerian men. If they they think that just because they pay for things for you that they can do whatever they want. And to be honest with you, ladies, if you're African-American, they're really, many of them are only serious with Nigerian women. They will think of you as a placeholder. I wanna give you the tea. I get a lot of shit when I talk about Nigerian men because they don't like people clocking their tea. That's the tea. So if you're going to engage with a Nigerian man, one of the, uh, the things that you need to understand, you, that you need to let them know that um, you're very close with your family. You're going to need to let them know that you're going to need to see their house. Um, because a lot of them won't take you to their house. One, because they have a family there. Or two, because they're not thinking of you, like, seriously. And people say it's the same for Ghanaian men as well. The reason I'm saying this is because I think a lot of us get really wooed by the fact that we feel like this man is cherishing me because... Many of us were not cherished growing up, so he feeds into this deeper need that we have, and so we feel deeply connected to these Nigerian men. But I will tell you, most of it is game. And a sorry-ass game as, at that. The gag of dating a Nigerian man, it's like passing, go and collecting $200. But what you don't understand is that when you pass the $200 and go, every property has a hotel on it and you will have to pay for it everywhere you land. Love bomb tea. And I think I can say this, the 23andMe test that I said, that I took, it told me that I was 23% Nigerian. So I'm really just talking about myself and my people. Yes, honey, Monopoly tea. Someone said, are you Igbo? No, but sometimes I, I'm ignorant. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my 
God, y'all, don't share this live, girl. They're gonna get me, girl. They're gonna get me, girl. Doreen said, should I expect a man to plan like the first three dates? He should basically plan them, do the logistics of them and pay for them. Yeah. Lavishly Manny said, I feel like Turkish men aren't actually serious. Turkish men are very much into black women. Like, if you walk down the street, you can get 20 Turkish men. Um, are they serious? I mean, most men aren't serious. Like, any man that is single, in my head, I just put like, okay, 80% um, of them aren't serious. So if you meet 10 men, eight of them are not serious. That's across the board. Yeah, Turkish men, they are in love with black women. But they're also really small. Like this. And literally shaped like this. Why are people telling me to stop? That's not what you're going to say to these Turkish men when they try to start. You're not going to say stop to these Turkish men. You're going to say, please keep on going. More. Mirhaba. Nasisin. Someone said, serving Turkish delight. No, girl. There's no Turkish delight here. There's no D. It's just light. Turkish light, honey. Turkish light. I had a, I had, I've, I've had a mini Turks. I speak nothing but the truth, ladies. I've had to do the work. I've had to do the research for each and every one of you. Did I suffer? Sometimes. In a good way and also in a bad way. <laughs> But I did it for you. <laughs> yeah? Someone said thank you for your sacrifice. Yeah, honey, when you're used to heavy, you can't go light. That's the tea. Someone said, what's the tea about the gingers? The gingers are everything. Get you one. Get you one. Get you one. Do you hear me? The gingers are the blacks of the whites. So they're, they're into black women for sure. And um, they, they'll do anything. Anything. They don't care. Someone said, where are they at though? They don't come out in the daytime because they'll burn. They're like vampires. So you have to find them in the nighttime. They will come out during St. Patrick's Day. You'll need to go to Ireland, Dublin, North Dublin specifically. Yeah. 
Yeah. And no shade, girl, but the, um, I'm not going to say it in a cute way. The pubes match the hair, girl. <laughs> That's all I got to say, girl. Red everywhere, girl. Fire red. Someone said it's ginger code for something. Girl, Google. Girl, I can't. Yeah, honey, what did what did they what did they call uh, Lindsay Lohan a few years ago? Fire crotch? That's them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, gingers are redheads, ladies. For the girls that don't know. Myra said, I love you. Thank you for all the amazing wisdom you impart to all of us. Girl, you're welcome. I don't know how much amazing wisdom it is when I'm just talking about D's, honey. But I'll try my best. How do I feel about coffee dates? I love them. I don't think you should go on a real date with a man until you have a coffee date with him. The thing about coffee dates is that it slows everything down. And you want to go, the slower the better. Because then you get to evaluate whether a man is really truly, truly there for you or just truly there to get it in. Somebody said, don't nobody want a little D. Some girls do. No shade, and y'all know who you are. If your V can't take big D, don't, don't talk shit. Don't talk shit. And y'all know who you are. Yeah, someone said Team Lil D. Right. The worst thing that can happen is you talking all this shit to some guy and then when it comes, when something happens, girl, and you see what is what he's really talking about, then you had talked so much shit that you feel like you gotta go through it and you suffering every stroke. Yeah. Who's, who's team little D? Who's team medium D? And who's team big D? That's what I want to know. Yeah. The worst position you can be in is you had talked all that shit and then you got to go through with it. And then you're doing one of these. Can't even enjoy it, girl. Feels like a war. Feels like surgery. Okay, I'm seeing mostly mediums. The gag is that the research says that if a guy has an eight incher, he, the probability that you will get an O is close to like 50 or 55%. Now, if he has an 11 incher or a three incher, the probability of your O goes down to like 30-ish percent. Yeah, okay, I love it girls, I love it girls. Most of y'all are saying mediums, which I love. Someone said medium with good girth. Like this kombucha bottle. I, yeah, honey. I, maybe I, someone said no. Ooh. Someone's, a lot of y'all said yes. Y'all into the kombucha, honey. Eight is not medium. Eight is upper medium. Val said, I need him to touch my walls. I know that's right. Someone said a curve. Mm-mm. I, I can't do curves, honey. I'll leave it to y'all. Okay, good. All right. Um... Good to know, good to know. I'm so glad to hear that most of you all are into medium because most of the men are medium. A lot of girls talking about, I need them, da, 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 da. 
And I want to be really honest with you all. Okay? Can I be honest with you all? Please? Okay. A lot of you all might feel like you need a big D because it is the only way that you're able to relax and release. And the work is not needing a D to do that. The work is actually creating a life for yourself where that naturally happens for you. A lot of you all cannot get, get to your O because you're so tense. Because your life is a freaking mess and your life is running you and you are not running your life. If you feel like you are one of those girls, realize you've got to get your life together so that you don't need a 10-incher so that you can relax once a week. Yeah? You will get your O much more often if you got a motherfucking relaxed life. You hear me, ladies? So get that shit together. And you, you know what will happen after that? A six will get you there. A six will get you there. And guess what? He doesn't even have to go. He doesn't have to do all that to get you there. Okay. Yeah. But here's the thing. You can create a relaxed life through your boundaries and through your feminine energy. That's what it looks like. Yeah. I hope this is helpful for you all. Because this is part of the dating life. This is part of relationshiping. Sometimes guys don't want to do that. They want to roll. They don't want to hit. Especially if they love you. Any random mofo can hit. Pound. But guys that are into you will want to roll with you. And if you're tense you won't be able to get off with that. And one of the most demoralizing things for a man is not being able to satisfy you. Right. The girls are saying, I never came, I never came. Girl... There is this one character in Mortal Kombat and he used to freeze the guys. Sub-Zero T. That might be where your cooch is, no shade. So you gotta, like I said before, create the life that you need to find pleasure and satisfaction, not just in the bedroom, but outside of it as well. Yeah. So, let's warm up the cooches, ladies. The punanis need to be warm, honey. 
like oatmeal on a chilly morning. Yes, honey, it's all about that pleasure principle. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go because I'm I got work in the morning. I gotta get the girls together. But I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, if you want to work with me, definitely book a call with me, but you don't have to. Listen to my podcast. It's called the Get Your Guy Coaching Podcast. And keep on coming to these lives. Yeah? We'll continue to chat it up, kiki a little bit, have some fun. Sound good? All right, ladies, be well. Bye now.